evening, everyone. So welcome to our special board meeting on our selection of our superintendent. Um, we have translation in Spanish. So if you need that uh, support, please see uh, Rocio, not, not Orania. So Rocio Camargo Fuentes. So tenemos traducción en español. Si necesita de este servicio, por favor pase con Rocio Camargo Fuentes. And if someone would like to speak um, to our agenda item, then please uh, complete a speaker card and hand it to Eva prior to that item. So each speaker will have two minutes. And um, I will ask will Pres Vice President Acosta to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. All right, we'll go on to uh, approval of our agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a uh, second. All right, I've got a first and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 502. And we will move on to our public comments. So this is an opportunity for members of the public to address um, items related to item 6.1, our superintendent search process. And again, just um, know that we are here to listen. So do we have any public speakers? Yes, we do. We have four, uh, Chris Webb, Nellie, Brandon, and Roddy. Okay, so um, first off, um, I've come to believe that like leadership at the top very important and that the culture that's established there trickles down and I say this not just because of PVSD, I mean nationally, like this is something I'm starting to gather. So this is a very important job you have and, and I wanted to come and express the qualities that I'd be looking for. One is humility and I say that because I felt like since 2018, since Renaissance had this glowing review at our WASC and we we got model continuation. I felt like we were basically attacked like for succeeding um, without it being the direct direction of um, the deal. So humility is something I look forward to seeing as a quality in our new leader. And then um, partly I say that is because I feel like we need to be humble enough to like acknowledge when there's mistakes and be willing to correct them. Um, also, I feel like um, with that, goes hand in hand uh, will will come a, a restoration of credibility for administration at multiple levels if we can do that because you know when we when when what happened to renaissance happened it was in the name of pbis it was in the name of mtss it was in the name of restorative justice and social emotional learning and i felt like we got all we we as a site and then as a district started to embody those uh, philosophies less because of the route that we took um also, I'd want somebody who's not going to pursue graduation for students at the expense of education. I feel like there's a right way to graduate people, um, and we, we, we can do it with the right structures. We've done it before, um, so I'd, I'd like to see us do things the right way, not pass people along. Um, also, um, I'd like to see the restoration of the, the, so, the safety net that is Renaissance. Um, some institutions that we have there, and also value the humanity of our students, see them as people and not numbers, not just dollar amounts. Um, I say this partly because we had a, I had a student who just matriculated this week, and I didn't even get to say bye. I randomly ran into him at Taco Bell, and he, he even expressed that he wants to say goodbye. So, so let's remember we we're dealing with humans. Thank you.
Um, we're going to kind of tag team some of our comments here because we only have two minutes. So my name is Brandon Denise. I'm the grievance officer for the PVFT. Um, good evening and thank you to the board and Mr. Sheckman for allowing me to speak here tonight. Um, the PVFT would like to express our appreciation for the leadership that Mr. Sheckman has shown during his time as interim superintendent. Um, the PVFT would like to acknowledge the work that Mr. Sheckman and the district cabinet have done to ensure that the start to the school year has gone smoothly. Um, the work that the negotiating teams for the PVFT and the PVUSD put in during last year's CBA negotiations has gone a long way in retaining and recruiting qualified educators and has helped to remediate the severe staffing issues that have plagued this district in recent years. Despite the optimism we are feeling as we start this school year, we know there is still work to do. This district serves more than half of the students in the county, and the surrounding districts look at the moves we make for guidance. As we prepare to initiate the process for identifying candidates for superintendent and ultimately hiring a candidate, the stakeholders in this community deserve transparency and to be included in the decisions made by the board and leadership associates. Families, students, educators, and classified staff deserve to have their voices elevated in these discussions because they will be directly impacted by the choices this board makes on who to hire. Um, in looking at the survey the Leadership Associates has prepared, we do have to question the usefulness of certain questions where respondents rank items based on order of importance when each of those items is highly critical to the success of the next superintendent. The survey respondents deserve to be able to provide more information than just ranking qualities and characteristics. Those are the questions towards the end of the survey from what I was looking at today. Um, should we get ready to switch? How much more time do I have? 30 seconds. Um, yeah, and I just think it's a really important process um, as we're doing this to include as much of the community as we can, the families, the students, the staff, because they're going to be the ones most directly impacted. And we want to make sure that we're hiring somebody who is truly for the students and for the staff in this district and puts the family and students first and actually does so and not just on social media. So, And I'll end my comments there so my colleagues can pick up. Good evening. I'm going to just keep continuing. So um, as Brandon was mentioning, um, PVFT is, is highly invested in this process of searching for a superintendent. It is a big direct impact to the work that we do and to our membership. So we are interested in a superintendent that is interested in cultivating a real relationship with all of the stakeholders, the parents, the students, the teachers, the classified staff, the administration, the district office, and who actually not just listens to them, but acts on their feedback. Um, we want someone who will walk alongside us for a day in our shoes, but also who truly understands the reality of the working and learning conditions. It is tremendously important to us that our next superintendent be able to communicate with all of the aforementioned stakeholders, and therefore we believe it must be a requirement that this person is bilingual. Um, as you are surely aware, 80% of the population of Watsonville speaks a language other than English. Um, our district is one of the county leaders in building dual language pathways. So in order to support that work and in order to really be able to drive that, they need to be bilingual. Um, we also want a superintendent with a proven track record of success in the classroom someone who is actually an educator, someone who understands what it's like to be in a classroom, to lead a class, to lead a staff, um, not someone who has just climbed a ladder, someone who's actually invested themselves and is dedicated to the development of teaching, administration, and central office staff. Someone who respects that there are professionals working in this district and would value the contributions of those professionals. We also know that a superintendent is responsible for an over $360 million budget. Um, it is really important that we find a superintendent 
who knows where to put the priorities in developing that budget. Nelly Vaquera Boggs, president of PBFT. Uh, thank you for um, providing this space to uh, discuss this process on um, this important position that, um, well, deserves the attention of everybody um, as it impacts our learning community um, and our working community because it is a very large employer. So to continue on with how, um, as an employer, I mean, obviously that involves budget. And when we, when we speak to the budget, and again, I've, sit, I've stated this in the past, while we negotiate for the adults and for the teachers in the classroom and our counselors and our psychologists and school nurses, um, our educators, um, we do that with our students um, as our foundational drive for the things that we look to achieve because we know that those wins are for them. And that means that we look at ways for our budget to demonstrate and prove that that is, um, that the priority is our students. Um, so we are wanting to be part of this, uh, a significant part of this uh, search for student, the superintendent, because we wanna ensure that that person is going to invest in our students investing in our students through the people that also work here in this district. Uh, many of who are community members, many of whom return to this area to work um, and continue investing in their community as adults. <clears throat> what you've heard from various members that we have here um, is that we're looking for somebody who's going to listen, not just to the PBFT, but CSEA and management and the families and our students. Education has changed a lot um, and significantly in the last several years. And so we need to be innovative as well in how we address um, the, the, the work ahead of us with, with continuing to educate our students and staying on top of um, the important civil right issues in our in our nation so we look forward to being a part of this hiring process and being a partner with you all and the leadership and associates as we embark on this important work of hiring our next superintendent thank you thank you and we have one more um martha belich <clears throat> members of the board my name is martha belich in addition to the prior speaker's comments I encourage you to look for a superintendent that is considering seriously the financial security and the future of the district. The PVUSD currently funds two independent charter schools in its jurisdiction. Those schools create significant financial impacts on the district. Such impacts are combining with the impacts from an ongoing decline in student enrollment. Under certain circumstances, these impacts can devastate a school district. According to leading public education expert, <clears throat> Professor Derek Black, state mandated charter schools lead to significant fixed costs stranded in traditional public schools, which school districts must bear without state assistance. Fixed costs, including hard to adjust expenses such as maintenance, staffing, transportation and utilities, jeopardize school districts' ability to deliver adequate and equitable educational opportunities. SABA is one of these two schools. Over the past year, the public record has documented that SABA zoning and use permit were established by grave and extensive violations of statutory land use uh, uh, regulations. Notwithstanding that, it is no secret that SABA, together with its municipal stakeholder, the city of Watsonville, is formulating aggressive expansion plans to build off of their fraudulent entitlements. There are consequences. SABA's expansion plans are the type of impacts analyzed by Professor Black. Such plans could result in a 2,000 student charter school costing the district upward of $32 million a year, nearly 10% of its budget, not to mention the financial toll of the overall operating costs. Notably, uh, I advise the board to hire someone who has the best entrance of the district at heart and public education. Thank you. And that's the last of our public speakers this evening. Thank you, everyone.
All right, so we will go on to our report and discussion item, and uh, our, the report will be presented by Leadership Associates. Thank you so much. So glad to be here this evening. Uh, today we're going to go through the outline that talks, that uh, says initial meeting discussion items. And we'll just kind of walk through this and have some conversations about uh, the overview of the search itself. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's just get started with number two. Designate boards, liaison, or spokesperson for the board. What we're asking for is this. We're asking the board to determine whether or not we will be communicating with the entire board or if the board will have a subcommittee that we'll, we'll uh, meet directly with. Uh, there, there's advantages and disadvantages of both, but whatever the board is comfortable with is what we would prefer to do. So I'd like the board to maybe have that conversation and maybe if you have questions regarding the pros and cons of each, you can do that. What would be a disadvantage for speaking to the entire board? There may be times in which we need a, a quick response on something, maybe a note or letter from a uh, community member, et cetera, that we want to work, reach out to, and typically we would do that with the president, but we could do it with the entire board. But that's typically what we do is to send information to the entire board versus subcommittees, but some districts prefer to have subcommittees. I prefer the whole board. I'll echo the same. Okay. Solid lot of head nodding, so we will con communicate with the entire board. Good. Next section talks about um, confirmation with Eva uh, regarding making sure that she's getting the information that she needs. And I know our uh, admin has reached out to her and had many conversations about the. Uh, Templates, this information that you have presented for your board meeting tonight, uh, language in terms of how to present that uh, at, for open and closed session and those types of things. And so are you comfortable with that? I want to make sure that you're getting support that you need as well. Okay. And, and I'll just add, if ever a question comes up, we know we can contact your office. Okay, Mary, you're absolutely correct. Please feel free to do that. Um, I'm a hop, skip, and a jump, and uh, I, I definitely want to be responsive to the needs of, of this community. Next, we want to ask. Uh, I just had a clarifying sure. question on that, Eric, though, um, because we're not putting staff in any awkward position, so we're not talking about internal personnel matter. We're talking about sub, sub, just this, right? Just Process logistics. Process and stuff for the public session meetings, not Correct. closed session meetings. I think you would deal with our interim. A absolutely. It, we were asking. Uh, the admin to do is our admin will give her language to post things on your website, language to post things uh, for board meetings, those types of things only, perfect. not anything to do with personnel matters or any intricate parts of the search at all. There, perfect. I just want to make sure we're sure. putting her in an awkward position. Next, uh, on your website, there are great pictures of each of you, of you and it has your uh, email address. Are those email addresses correct? Because as we're, uh-oh, Trustee Acosta. I will actually reach out to um, our interim superintendent and have, talk to him, and he could, I'm sure, contact IT and get that corrected. Okay. Because that will be helpful as we send information to the entire board. We want to make sure that everyone's being contacted at the same time. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. If we can, uh, there is a list of stakeholders that we typically ask boards to consider. And if we want to go to the, I think. I think it's on your board agenda. And what we basically have done is we will show you what the typical uh, groups that we reach out to. This is only a, uh, go down to the very last one. A second. Not that one, but go one back. Yeah, there. That's the one. 
And so here are the groups of, that we typically reach out to, but every community is different. Every community has various parent groups, student groups, et cetera, that we want to ensure that they're included because we definitely want to make sure that we have the broadest sense of voice from your community. We also want you to be cognizant of groups that maybe have not been as involved in the process that we want to make a special effort to reach out to them. And so we'd like to kind of solidify these groups because these are the groups that we're going to be inviting to the uh, in-person or Zoom sessions along the way. I, I just had one, one thought on um, number 13 for parent partners. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if we can just make that a little bit more inclusive and just say like parent slash caregiver partners because we have a lot of families where, as, you know, I, I have, a, well, you know, who are foster or mm -hmm. you know, it's grandparents or other family members or family friends. And I just want, I want to make sure that all of the families or caregivers of our students know that their input is, in, is wanted. Yes, And absolutely. also on, on the survey, that language, because it does say parent guardian, but if we could say parent guardian slash caregiver. Sure, absolutely. We can do that. Other members or, or things that are missing that we want to have some changes and so on? Are substitute teachers represented? We've got our, our teachers association. No, not per se. So we can, you want to add them? They don't typically, but they've made an effort lately to reach out to HR to begin a negotiations process. So in fairness, we should include them. Okay. If they show, they show, if they don't, they don't. Are there, is there a specific name that you call yourself? Some call them guest educators, some call them no, substitutes. A union for substitute teachers. Got it. Got it. You're going to use your word? Yeah. Say it again now. Communication. Communication workers of America. Okay. We have a place for Eric, we have a, a space in every regular board meeting for uh -huh. our union representatives uh -huh. to speak for five minutes, and okay. they are on every single agenda. Got it. Okay, Whether so they I can show up or not. Okay. Right? But okay. To Murray's point, they deserve their space and time. Absolutely. Okay. Can you scroll, scroll down a little bit, please, Eric? So the bottom is when we say community partners, chamber reps. I would, I would think maybe community partners, including some of our uh, uh, Watsonville City Council members, might be a good idea. Um, maybe our county supervisor. I don't know. Is that a bad idea? Any reason why that's a bad idea? That's a great idea, Adam. Do, do we have to name the community partners tonight that we'd like to see, or can we give that to you in feedback? We, that either way works for us, but okay. the sooner the better. Um, and it, it. Okay. We've started that right. process okay. based on a request from your office. Okay. So, okay, so city council and, and let's do this. How much time do you think you need to maybe finalize the list? Well, if we could do it now, I think it's ideal that we're agree. having this special meeting tonight okay. for this purpose, yep. and um, and and to uh, further uh, what Trustee Bolanoskow is speaking to, we have an intergovernmental relation committee, which works. It's the school district. It is members of this. Um, so there's th there's a space for three members of the school, th three trustees of the school district. There's some staff. Um, our superintendent's part of that meeting and some other cabinet members. Then there's the city. There's three members of the city council that are on it, mm -hmm. the city manager, some staff. And then we also work with our county supervisors mm -hmm. um, in Santa Cruz County. That would be um, more specifically it's Zach Friend and um, Felipe Hernandez because they mm -hmm. cover the geography area mm -hmm. of the school district. And more recently we've talked about an expansion because of the issues we had 
this last winter in Monterey County because we straddle two counties, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you well know, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. um, Supervisor Glenn Church from North, uh, from Monterey County s s uh, Supervisors because, again, yeah. we're covering our district. Okay, sure. And and it also includes our law enforcement, both city police, mm -hmm. uh, county sheriff, for both sides respectively. So that's a pretty big group and it, since we already have an intergovernmental relations committee, I think it's important to be inclusive of all those folks because those are ongoing conversations. Okay, good, good. And I would agree with that in, because um, you're partners in the community. You all serve your kids, you all serve your families and so that's important that they know that all means all in that case. Okay. Okay. I, um, in case it's not on the list, we have a lot of um, with our uh, after-school programs, we have a lot of community partners like Life Lab, mm -hmm. a lot of the Arts Council, yes. people who have a huge stake in our district. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it would be valuable to just name in a few couple sp specifics, the Arts Council, Santa Cruz County, um, and there's a bunch of them. I don't know if I have to list all of them, but mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> I'll say it. I'll, I'll stem. Well, thank you. Oh, good idea. No, okay. but uh, you know, um, Adam, I, 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 I totally agree with that because I was talking to um, uh, Sarah Brothers from the Arts Council, uh, and just you know, she had been involved in the previous oh, okay. you know, search, and just had talked about you know just how that meant a lot you know, to be part of that, and I think you know we're having a lot of discussions about arts in our district in particular and I think that that's you know th as a priority mm -hmm. you know for our district I think that's important but I think you know just that a priority of this district is a well-rounded education so definitely including like like life lab having that that garden focus having mm -hmm. the arts having music having you know some of our science curriculum and, and you know just having that breadth right you know, and having those people who can put that perspective, mm -hmm. I think is really. It, it is, I'm a firm believer in that. And as a former superintendent, I always make sure that those are the things that all of our kids got from the gardening to mm -hmm. the music, to the arts. It didn't matter what their background was. Everybody deserved to have a well-rounded education. Everybody. Did. Yeah. Maybe you should apply, man. I like, I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, I will tell you one of the reasons, and, and again, I'll tell you my baby story, but I've not told you in the past, but. I typically will only choose districts that I have some affinity for, and because of those types of things that I did in my district, I felt there was something that, yeah, yeah, I, I can relate to this and want to make sure all of our kids get those types of, of activities, so yes. So there's a number of nonprofits that we partner with that are community partners, and I'd like to invite at least the executives and maybe somebody on in maybe their manager role um, to join. So some of these, and this is why I wanted a little extra time because I don't want to forget anybody, but some of them include Second Harvest, Salud Para La Gente, Food What, Pajaro Valley Health Trust, um, Pajaro Valley Prevention and Student Assistance, Community Action Board, Community Bridges. Mm -hmm. Who am I forgetting? The hospital. Yeah, the hospital would hospital be good. Board, right. yeah. mm -hmm. If if a community member or you know any stakeholder, you know brings to our attention, you know a, a community partner that you know we didn't think of in this moment, is there any issue with adding them on later? Absolutely not. Okay. I mean, sometimes what we've done is we've scheduled the two dates for the Zoom and in person, and somebody just pops up and we forget, or they reach out to you, and uh, one of us will, will make sure we're available. Okay, That's great. Because yeah. I, I want to make sure that yeah. we hear from everybody we mm -hmm. need to hear from. Applied survey researchers is the other one, Susan Bertschi. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let me kind of walk through in terms of some of those. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just Chris. wanted to add um, there's a few of us that are set up here who work in higher ed in the region. Um, and Right, we have, um, I, I, I just to say it, President um, Dr. Trustee Holm works for Cabrillo College. Mm -hmm. um, I work for Cal State University Monterey Bay. And 
at the higher ed level, we are already dealing with and seeing ripple effects from our K-12 sector, what's flowing in. I mean, and COVID was only a further impact to mm -hmm. that negatively. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's maybe also important, considering how our district is and how it straddles the two counties, mm -hmm. that we, lots of our students will go to Cabrillo College. Some do go <laughs> in, on the Monterey County side, mm -hmm. Hartnell. And, and in Monterey County, we have Hartnell and MPC both. Mm -hmm. a majority, I would say, probably into Hartnell. We even have Gavilan serving in the San Benito area. Mm -hmm. And then, we, of course, we have UC Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. and we have Cal State University Monterey Bay. I mean, obviously, we have lots of high school students who go to other places as well, but this we're talking in our region. And I think it's maybe important to invite conversations at the high admin level roles of those JCs and those two universities at least because we're all in the same region okay. dealing with the same things. Okay, do some outreach and if we can get some contacts that will be helpful uh, for, for that, but yeah. They may hate you, us. You, you, yeah. <laughs> you may know someone. Maybe we've got to look guys. for new jobs okay. tomorrow. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So here's what I have thus far. We want to make sure we include caregivers as a part of a parent group. We also have the Communication Workers of America Association that you have here, the Intergovernmental Committee, community partners such as your after school groups and those, those people, uh, looking at law enforcement, various uh, city council, nonprofits, and higher ed. Would that be a pretty uh, well rounded group? Mm -hmm. Good. Perfect. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Actually, that's one of my favorite parts. I really do enjoy reaching out to the communities and getting a sense of what they see and what they want for their future of the community. And Eric, real, real quick question. Yes. Is this, a, or in, in terms of the numbering, is that in order of priority? No, not Thank at all. You. Just a list. Just a list. <laughs> I'm black. Because if it was priority, I think we would put students <laughs> would probably be at the at nope. the, No problem. <laughs> just, okay. just wanted to make sure that No, thank you for saying that. It's important work. Okay, so we've affirmed uh, uh, stakeholder groups for input sessions. Now, what will happen is this. We will be meeting with these various stakeholders. We will also be conducting an online survey, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And that information we gather is that we will look for trends. Trends in terms of what does the community say they want to see in their superintendent. And we take that and we'll create what's called a position description. That position description we will put together. We'll give you a couple of documents. One, an executive summary that's going to outline here's what we've gleaned from the online survey, here's what we gleaned from the in-person or the Zoom calls, and here are the trends that we did see. That will then transfer over to a position description. We will complete that and we'll send it out to the entire board. We'll give you a time frame to say, hey, we want you to take a look at it, uh, give us some feedback, and then we'll take that and that will be posted so uh, applicants can get a chance to see, all righty, here's um, what we, we believe that the community says they want to see in the next superintendent. Are you talking about posting as in a formal job description posting or posting these are the characteristics that were come up with? They will be posted um, not as a job description, but they will be on our website and on your website for any candidates who hit the link of Superintendent Surgeon in uh, Pajaro Valley. Here are the characteristics community said that they would like to see. They'll also um, have a link to EtCal, which is our uh, administrative magazine as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it go, will go out to the over a thousand people who subscribe to our uh, newsletter and so on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we've already decided in looking at bullet three majority of board members to review. We've decided that everybody's going to be correct. You got it. Now the online survey. We're looking at the possibility of having that online survey begin on September 7th and run through September 18th. 
that gives people plenty of time. We will put out advertisement. It will go on your website, our website. We'll work with Ava to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go during those periods of time. A couple of things that we do need to solidify, one being uh, what languages would you like that in? Definitely English and Spanish. English and Spanish? Um, do, but what, do, I mean, is, yeah. Is there, but do we have, is there, is there, is there any, because there, I know there was, the people were working on some written forms, but I don't know to what degree. Alicia, how would we, um, and communicate with a mistake or would we have to do a video? And how would they fill out the survey? We typically do have it in Spanish. No, for the mistakes that Oh, got it, mistake okay. okay. Usually what we do is we, uh, we ask them to get together with a, a family or a member or a friend mm -hmm. and choose one either the English or Spanish to complete it in that so that they can complete it. I'm going to ask a silly question that I maybe come up with an idea. How many people are we talking in general? About 500 families. So if we were just to say, again, we've not done this before, but I'm thinking if we were to set something up where they can all come to one place and kind of figure out how to do it so that no one has to do it individually or feel alone. I was also going to suggest possibly using one or two DLACs with a focused, with focus messages that go out to the community to make sure our mixteco population is there. Uh, something that I was thinking, um, I, I think Eva had started to allude to it with um, doing something like with a video about maybe how to do and take the survey. Also, would it be possible to do some sort of voice over in mixteco language? Right, where so it's speaking the questions and the response and then they could speak in their response. Do you we don't have that capability, but I'm district mine. Uh, well, yeah, I think that I'm glad. Thank you, Trustee uh, Flores, for bringing that, and Trustee Acosta for bringing this up. Um, it has come to my attention that some of our Mixteco families do not are a little frustrated with ongoing communication, just at the very everyday kind of school to school level. And obviously, there's a challenge there, and it's come to that's something I thought we should bring up in general on how to improve that. So, how appropriate in searching for a new superintendent, might we be able to work in something along those lines? Um, I don't have a perfect idea right now, mm -hmm. but this seems like mm -hmm. worth doing. I don't know if it's, and I get you're trying to say, was it this survey, this online survey, is this try to fit into that shoehorn or is it something similar but different in, yeah. a diff in a different stage? Yeah, I'm even thinking about maybe it's not the online survey because we ask everybody there are three basic questions we ask about everyone. It doesn't matter what your role is in the district. The three questions we want, or prompts we want answered are, what are the characteristics? What are the strengths of the districts where the, the community gets to brag? And what are the challenges or opportunities for growth? Those are the, really the three that the position description, summary, and everything will relate to. Yes, it's always great when you're looking at disaggregating data to be able to say teachers, students, uh, business people are doing that. But because of for, for this population, I think it's, it's important to get voice as much as some of those other things along the way. So if there's a way in which you can at least get the voice to those three questions, then I, I think we would get what we need out of it. And I think the district would get what they need. And I think the families would get what they need in the sense of you're going to come to a setting. And I don't, I'm not sure in terms of what that would be. I'm not sure the the uh, access to the internet if we you know did it on a zoom night uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be an in-person someplace where the families feel comfortable going because that's another consideration but doing something of that sort so we can get those three questions answered and that their voices then will be a part of the trends that we do see for the district and I think that's just a really important part of our community. And, and, and to Ms. Jimenez's point of saying that that's over 500 families, I could run a pretty quick number in my head. And what that means, I mean, we're talking 
population wise that's a, more than a couple thousand people mm -hmm. at a minimum two parents per child mm -hmm. at a minimum mm -hmm. and that's if it's one child right right so we're talking easily more than a few thousand people and and to trustee Bolano Scow's point and some of us had also heard these these same communications the frustration within this part these stakeholders of our community this is the time to really figure out how we're going to address that yes Agreed. Uh, so I know I know we're going through this thing um, the timeline is there a place for um, maybe we'll get when we get there we can talk about having a, some kind of community I know we're having a parent conference we have a parent meeting like we did last year at a hall I think it's in October um, and I'm just wondering through the search process do we want to have maybe use that date or have some kind of because it seems like I know you're trying to talk about the survey right now and so uh, to but my this mind is all, this, this is all part and parcel though to, to that reach it might be two different things okay. you know, or, or related two related things <laughs> yeah so if it seems most appropriate to have the Misteco outreach done with a community meeting well maybe there's a way to have a just a general community meeting yeah. um, getting community input I know we have these board meetings but I don't if right. we're also having this parent conference meeting at EA Hall maybe there's a way to mm -hmm. To work that in, just just thinking out loud. To address yeah. that, that during the two days in which we have either a in person where we're going to be in the district or Zoom for people who best more convenient, we will have an open forum at least one of those nights. It may be good for us to have an open forum two nights, one for general population and and maybe one for our group. Could that work? But again, I, w I want to do something that is meaningful to our community versus if, if that's not going to be what's most meaningful to the community. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering, because I, I, the, that, that October date, we're talking about doing the survey in, like, starting next week. Mm -hmm. And so October would be a month out. I see them as different yeah. things. So okay. When was this forum night you are talking? Is that, is that? So we're looking at having the uh, input sessions on the 12th and 13th. And so they either be the night of the 12th or night of the 13th, or both nights, depending on what we need. That's coming pretty fast. I don't know if that's, that's less than two weeks away. Do you mind if I interject? Sorry, please. I, yeah. Something because this is this was already mentioned at a previous meeting mm -hmm. um, with y'all were there in attendance. Both both search firms were there. Mm -hmm. I know because I I said it and I know what I said, um, but I also recall hearing colleagues mm -hmm. from both sides of me also reiterating the same thing that. It's really, really important to me as mm -hmm. a trustee and trusted into this position. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe based on what I heard colleagues saying that night at that meeting, it's also pretty important to them um, about having ample community involvement, mm -hmm. right? And I, I'll speak to it for myself, right? For, for me, honestly, my view of that is because, right, there's, there's a certain thing that happens every two years right it's called an election <laughs> right and we're coming up on one mm -hmm. um, in a year mm -hmm. there there may be the same board members here there may be not it may be a new board and then three years from there it's gonna happen yeah. again mm -hmm. right hopefully whoever the superintendent is they're here for more than three years mm -hmm. right um, so having that ample community involvement because I feel that this is our community superintendent it's not the board is the one hiring mm -hmm. right that's Correct. really the one person that, mm -hmm. that we hire but it's the community superintendent mm -hmm. because the superintendent will most likely be here when there could be different people on this board mm -hmm. so part of what was said that the right behind that mm -hmm. for me was when I said I want ample community involvement, meaning also having listening sessions mm -hmm. and speaking sessions, because I know you're saying two, mm -hmm. but, and, and I know you know the district and the makeup, it's a huge geography, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? What the needs are for some folks in Aptos, right. 
what the needs are for folks in Watsonville, what the needs are for some folks in Monterey mm -hmm. County, and even different areas in Watsonville mm -hmm. can be very vastly different. Mm -hmm. And so what I recall me saying and colleagues also saying is we wanted to have these sessions focusing geographically in right. areas. It's Correct. not necessarily easy mm -hmm. for, you know, say, well, we're going to have it at Aptos, and then for families here to go there, mm -hmm. and vice versa, we're going to have it in Watsonville. So having something, I think we specifically mentioned all the contemporary high schools. Mm -hmm. We've also, Renaissance, even though it's not one of our contemporary, it's still a very important high school as well. Mm -hmm. So, but at a minimum, having that at Aptos, PB High, Watsonville High, Correct. and looking at those sessions. And now we've also just identified also this evening a whole other group right. that needs to, to be recognized mm -hmm. somehow. And, and if it's 500 families or more than 500 students, mm -hmm. and based on that number I came up with, we're not going to fit a few thousand people in one room in one night. Mm -hmm. So I think to this, the two meetings that you've mm -hmm. outlined that you, your mm -hmm. firm will be having, right. I think my vision of that is that that's going to be more than two meetings. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, and, and that's possible. And what I'm looking at from those meetings is the two main categories where we're talking about that group there, those can be done in two days. That can be done in two days. The evening meetings may take more than that. We may have those two days and we may have two other days that we'll, we'll need to because if we're, because we, I do recall the three uh, geographical areas that you had mentioned before. So we know we need, need to make sure we hit each of those areas. And then again, you mentioned the fourth area. So maybe there are four nights. That, that's very possible that that happens. I think that's a good idea. And I think mm -hmm. we need a little more, just a little more lead time. Just the 12th. I don't, I mean, maybe it makes sense to start something on the 12th or 13th, but I don't think we've done any marketing yet. I mean, I, this is the first time hearing about it. I'm sorry, I read. The, I thought this was our opportunity to figure out what makes sense. Oh, it is so, absolutely yeah, because on the original yeah. timeline, if you take a look at it, it says the fifth and sixth. So yeah. we moved it back to 13th and 12th and 13th. But this is your timeline. This is your timeline. Mm -hmm. All we can do is give suggestions, and you know your community better. You know how much lead time works best. Our experience has told us too much lead time doesn't matter as much because once people know, they know. Uh, but your community could be different. And every community is different. So if we need to move it back, we get to move it back. And, and we're a big, big community. And you know, I also see these not just, just you know, this is just me speaking, not only as what do you want in the next superintendent, but also just for us as board members, what's working great and what's needs what's not working right and Correct. the next superintendent mm -hmm. will want to pay attention to those meetings as well and say well here's what here's what here's what the community is saying I, that's why i brought up that late october meeting and that i'm not trying to fit it in necessarily but i think that's kind of the purpose of that a little bit and i attended it last year and there's a lot of educational sessions that were great but i think this is a little bit more town hall what's working in aptos what's working at pv high what's working at watsonville high school i think that's a very good idea um I would I would encourage a little more lead time so we can really market it get the schools involved in marketing get the principals mm -hmm. get the teachers involved um, that's my suggestion okay. what does a little more lead time mean to you how about uh, end of September three three four weeks yeah. to start them okay rest of the board Okay, you wanna do that? Okay, so let's do this. Let's put the community input sessions, move them out end of September, and then we'll do a timeline accordingly because there's certain time frames that we have to hit as well in terms of when it can be published, getting the information back to you and those types of things. So that's, that's not an issue. I guess what I'm a little confused about, Eric, is so you keep saying the, the two meetings, the community meetings, right? Right. But when we're talking about these other areas, Aptos High, PV High, Watsonville High, Renaissance High, our folks on the Monterey County side of our border, mm -hmm. um, even though there's no high school over there. Mm -hmm. um, right now the middle school's not there, but <laughs> that's another story. They're gonna be home. Um, <clears throat> so you're com we're, I guess that's a good way to describe those as more like town halls, so to speak, not these type of community meetings, but how does that, then how is that input these two meetings and then 
so maybe we're identifying at least four or five mm -hmm. other, if mm -hmm. we call them town hall meetings. Right. How does that all integrate? We ask everyone the same three questions. So as a result of that, we're able to triangulate, here's what we are seeing as trends in each of the groups. Okay. And that's, that's how we ended up getting the position description because by making sure we keep the same three prompts, you can absolutely start to dis disaggregate the data based on each of the prompts. And that's how we can determine what the position description is. Yes. Yeah. Follow up question. So, the, sure. What are the three questions? So, the, okay. And the, the, I was trying to make a um, reference. So, you are, is it your vi are you suggesting, the, um, just so I understand clarification, the three questions are going to be asked at the open community forum as a They're going to be asked at the, at the session with each of the groups. They're going to be asked of you. Right. They're going to be asked at the commu open community forums as well. Yes. Every group we meet with will be asked the same three prompts. And so with the open com community forum, and I, I think that makes sense to me what you're saying. I think that we also want to have space in there for some, some general feedback uh, done in a thoughtful way. So um, because I think it doesn't make sense for to have, and maybe, and maybe that, that's obvious <clears throat> that people will have an ability to speak on whatever's bothering them whatever needs addressing. And see, you know. my concern is I don't want to conflate. But I don't think it needs to be all on you either. Right, you, right. I'll say well, you, you run our community forum. No, no, gotcha. That's probably outside your scope. Okay, correct. But we say let's include those questions and then also this is kind of just important for our board. To just, so I get, does that make sense to you? So I don't want to throw it all on him to run these community forums. I feel like that's a district responsibility. But they're going to we, ask, they're going to answer what they see as the strengths of the district is one of the questions. They're going to tell you what the challenges are as a part of the district. And, and then if you think you have some follow-up after that, maybe? Maybe it's, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's not, maybe it's not as complicated as I'm worried about. But I, I just don't want to throw it all on you I, is also either. This is what we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're paying money from? Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. You do it. Okay, so in terms of a timeline, we're going to bring back a timeline that, that uh, starts with the old community input at the end of the month or, and, and maybe into October. And that will give you ample time, correct? You got it. So I'm going to drop all the way down to number seven. There you go. All right, so number seven is community is candidate recruitment, and that is where we will take the information that we've get, uh, garnered from all of the various groups, put them in trends, provide you with a position description, which says, based on the trends, here's what the community says that they want. The board will have an opportunity to take a look at that and have conversations about that. We'll also send you an executive summary, which will be more detailed in terms of what your community says they wanted to see in the next superintendent. Uh, we will also uh, provide some of the raw data to you once we have finished crunching all the numbers and so on. And we also recommend that you give that information to your, your uh, superintendent candidate so they have a good feel for here's the community said they wanted to see as we were going through this process. So the board and the superintendent as a governance team could take a look at and, and uh, go through the, that, those documents. Okay. Thoughts, questions about seven? That's, that's the one I was asking about earlier, right? It's yes. It's a formal it, job prescription. It's saying this is, right. which is on your website, it'll be in your publication and on the district's website, correct? Exactly. And so, honestly, if someone came and said, hey, I heard you have this, say, yeah, go to the website, see if you feel you're right fit. Exactly that, exactly that. And, and one of the things we'll ask when we get calls, have you looked at the, job, the, the uh, position description? 
I recommend that you do that, and then let's have a conversation. Or what tends to happen, too, is people will start to contact us or start contacting us now, and I will tell them, wait until you see the position description. Then we can have a conversation after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number eight, this is critical because when we publish the position description, it's important that, and by law now, we have to have a salary range. And so this is where you're going to tell us what is the salary range for this position? Did I misunderstand something, or was that part of the personnel decision uh, discussion in closed session? No, we have to do an open session. It has to be an open session. If I could, just, just like yeah. the superintendent's contract has to be brought to the regular board meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, the last time we went through this. Mm -hmm. um, our sitting superintendent who was then retiring was making X and leadership and associates came to us and essentially said We're, you're not going to be able to hire anybody for X because here's what the going rate is for mm -hmm. superintendents in mm -hmm. this region or you know mm -hmm. what in in the Bay Area so are, are you, you can you provide some insight to us about what the range should look like so I can give you a little insight. I, got a, I did take a look at Transparent California, which is a year out, and it did talk about your previous superintendent's uh, salary. And you guys probably know it better than I do because this is almost two years out. And it was somewhere in the vicinity of 233000 and with benefits uh, at about 70000 70 plus. So a total compensation was something like three hundred five. But we're only looking for your, the salary itself. And you could do something, and again, I don't want to put a hurt, I don't want to throw a number out there that's going to put a hurting on you guys or, overall. But I can tell you uh, 240 to 270 <clears throat> would, would be fair. And the final number would be part of the negotiation. Correct. Correct. Because it, it, it will be a range, right? Right. In the posting, and because, I mean, I'm already, my brain's already thinking that there could be different candidates with different qualifications. Exactly so I, that. I, I, let's just say. Right. Someone nope. has a master's degree, does not have a PhD, someone has a PhD or an EDD, right? right. It's, I mean, how do you, do yeah. we decipher that? So I, I guess the, that range sort of helps to address that exactly it does because you may get someone who applies who has seven years as superintendent right and they're probably going to be at the higher end you also may get someone who's never been a superintendent or this will be their first superintendent and so that they would be at the 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 other end and then you do look at everything from you know doctor stipends to that but that's on the side people are going to look at what's the range one of the things we will do is when we bring you the final the the group that you're going to interview we will ask them to complete a salary a contract parameters so we get a chance before you even get to see these candidates that okay they're within the range and or that we say hey you're not you're not even close to that range along the way you're asking for you know 310 you saw you saw the salary range so so that that happens as well but on the question on this range that we need to come up with, I mean, does that need to be done per se tonight, or can we do that at another point? In I time? would like to have it tonight. However, I'm going to need it at least before we do the community input sessions, which is in the yeah in the September. Because. We had this discussion in agenda setting committee meeting, right? We weren't like per se having this as an action item tonight. We, if there was enough of a majority to give direction, yes. But it's mm -hmm. sort of like mm -hmm. when we do sometimes report and discussion items or, uh, or we have public hearings where an item has to be brought before the board at one meeting, but no vote could be on it that night. Right. And then we vote on it at the next meeting. It mm -hmm. gives time and space. Sure. Right, and so instead of just jumping, making a decision, mm -hmm. and our next board meeting is the 13th, I think we agreed. I was trying to make it a week early. Um, I think that if, 
the, for the five of us are here, if there's comfort with that to um, have that on that next agenda as an action item, that will definitely be before. Absolutely. And that no, that, that's fine. You don't have to be here per no. se for that, but no. it be reported to No, that's, that's, that's absolutely perfect. I mean, whatever the consensus, that's just my thought. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, that really work. ready to jump on that mm -hmm. tonight. And, and, and personally. Is that? Yeah, sorry. And, you know, we have been criticized for the, the salary of our, our superintendent in the past, and I'm wondering if you've seen other districts pay under the market rate. No, not in this climate. No. Can anybody remind me what we, when we voted a few months ago to raise the superintendent's salary, what we voted at, was it 256 or something like that? 14, 14 and a half percent, sorry, your mic. But it wasn't just the superintendent's pay raise, it was the district's pay raise to its employees. Hmm. Yeah. Right. right, but, it was and it wasn't all for one year. I think at least it's saying, yeah, I mean, it went to a specific amount. That's what I'm wondering. And right. It was around 256, okay. if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think Eric's saying 240 to 270. Mm -hmm. That sounds okay to me. Okay, you want to bring it back uh, after your September 13th meeting? Yeah. Works. Okay. Works to me. Yeah. Great. All righty, so that's eight, nine. I'm assuming you guys are going to take care of that by the 13th. <laughs> Yes. All righty, and now we're ready. Can I say one more thing on that, actually? Oh, yes, absolutely. So if we have a candidate that everybody agrees on that we just love, we want to get them so badly, but they're down in San Diego making a fortune, like, it might go out of the range that we actually set. So I just want to caution everybody that because we're setting a range doesn't mean that the negotiations aren't going to, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. What we're, the purpose of it, and this is a new law, because in the past we could just say competitive. And, but now the new law basically says we have to put it on our position description. And we don't get involved in the negotiations, uh, technically. We will basically say, okay, this person is within the range that you said, or they're a little above. They're a little above, and so you get to make a decision as to whether you want to move them forward or not. But you'll have that when we go into the interviews with, with, with each of the, for each of the candidates. Can I just ask you, Eric, like, what have you seen as like possible repercussions of that going outside of what we post as the range? Going to I don't see it often. I don't. The repercussion, obviously, is going to be what your community has to say. If you go above it, okay. Mm -hmm. And no, but, but and with this law, no legal repercussions. No, either. no legal repercussions okay. at all. No, and you could justify it by you know indicating here's a person who has these qualifications, who nails everything that the community says that they want. They're currently making this, and we think they're we're thinking that uh, we're willing to take take that on because. We believe that strongly in the person. And you get to do that. Okay. All righty. Any questions that you have regarding the process at this point? I'm at number 10. And will you be telling us a little bit more about the interview process? Yes, so the interview process will be as following. We will bring to you uh, a book. That book will have all of the people who apply for the position. In fact, I want to go back a little bit. I will be giving you some form of updates about every 10 days. That update may be something such as, okay, we have 27 people who requested applications. The range of those 27 are seven are sitting superintendents, 10 are associate superintendents, and then 10 are something else. We'll also keep, so we'll provide you with updates so you can tell your community and, and you can inform them, here's what's going on in the search, because we don't want to wait between these, for these milestones in order to keep you informed. 
But once we have identified um, the candidates who we believe are tier one, these are top candidates who basically meet the criteria that the community and the board says they want to see in their next superintendent. Then there'll be tier two. Tier two will be candidates who are very strong. However, they may, may be missing one characteristic. So for example, they're not bilingual. But boy, do they meet every uh, one of the other criteria. So we're going to tell you that's, that's why they're two. And you get to have some conversations about that. And then there's tier three. Tier three are those who we believe do not come close to meeting the minimum requirements that the board and the community says they wanted to see. Once we've identified, and we'll sit in the meeting and we will present the candidates to you, here are the ones we believe you should interview. The board has the right to say, you know what, this person's in tier two. I want to move them up. I think they're worth an interview. The board may also look at it and say, yes, I see this person's at tier one, but I'm not loving them. I want to bump, drop them out. The board gets to do that. Eventually, what we typically do is have about uh, five candidates that we interview. Once and that interview is typically done in one or two days, depending on the board. Typical interview in a one day. Interview all five. Board deliberates, gets consensus on who are the top one, two, or three we're going to bring back for an interview. Interviews would start, let's just say, at 8.30, go to about 4, and then you may bring the other two candidates back at 5 or 6, or three candidates. That's the one day, and it's done, and then the board will make a decision that evening. The board will at that point call the finalists and say, we would like to offer you the position pending contract negotiations. That's a one dayer. Two dayer, it's a very similar process. You interview all five, one day, you go home <laughs> and you, you decide that evening uh, who you want to bring back and then the next day you, enter, you bring back there are number one, two, or three candidates, depending on how many you feel you want to do at that point. So that's the processes that we we use typically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just for <coughs> excuse me, just for clarifications on the interview process. Yes. Um, those are closed session interviews. They are closed session interviews with the board only. Is it typically how we've done it? Just for clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I know we've had um, several community members reach out, you know, asking for more transparency. Mm -hmm. And we specifically had someone ask, you know, that the interviews be public. So if you can just address, sure. you know, to the public why that's not mm -hmm. possible. And also just emphasize that for our community members and stakeholders, you know, the, the time for them to really speak up and have their vo voices heard, sorry, would be those surveys and those forums and you know those other opportunities that they will be given. You said it better than I could. <laughs> the reality is this. We strongly, strongly urge the board to have what's called a closed session, which means it's only the board is interviewing the candidates. A couple of reasons. One, sitting superintendents are very leery of having uh, others involved in the process because of confidentiality. And they're very concerned about leaks. In fact, what typically happens is your city, a lot of your sitting superintendents will apply on the very last day because that's how concerned they are with amenity is that they won't even put their stuff in. They'll often tell us that, yeah, we're, I'm going to apply, but we won't even see it until and I'm talking about a 5 o'clock deadline. I'm talking between 3 and 5 o'clock, the hit send, because they're that concerned. The other concern we have is that when we've done the community uh, panels with the board, if the community panel identifies someone different than who the board has identified, then you have a conflict. And how do you resolve that conflict along? So we strongly recommend that, as you said, uh, Tristy Flores, 
that the community will have many opportunities. They will have the online survey. They will have the individual meetings. They will have community forums in, in the evening. So there's three different ways for them all to be a part of this process. The board has done a tremendous job, probably one of the best I've seen, of identifying groups who uh, you want to ensure are a part of this process. You know, you didn't just stick with the cookie cutter. You were very, very thoughtful in identifying uh, community members who you want to be a part of, of this process. And we want to make sure that happens. And to your, as we mentioned earlier, if there is a situation where you feel like, oh, we missed this group, you just call us and we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We have oftentimes Zoom calls, sometimes in person, whatever we, we need to do. But we're pretty, we're, we're very, very open uh, to, to going outside. Yes, we have to have a structure, no question about that but it is not set in stone. It allows some flexibility along the way. Mm -hmm. Eric, I have um, a question for you with regards to, I noticed for the advertisement and recruitment period, mm -hmm. it's a rock solid two weeks, right, to the day um, on that. Is, I mean, that typical, I, I sit on hiring mm -hmm. committees at the university level, mm -hmm. and I've seen that range a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, three, four weeks. And what will happen is this. People will start to apply, and we'll start to do some vetting when they apply before whatever the deadline is. So we'll start that process. In addition to that, um, once we've had these conversations, We'll have a pretty decent idea, even before we formally put the position description out there regarding that. But uh, we, we found this to be very successful for us. It's, it seems to be ample amount of time for us to go out and recruit and to find the right candidates for this, for this position. In just two weeks? Yep. Versus, let's say, three or four? For this the posting, I'm talking. Say it again? I'm sorry. For the posting of the position. The actual posting of the position. Oh, the yeah. time for the applicants right. to yeah. be reviewing and applying, submitting yeah. their CVs. Their, their and the reason for that is they already know you're open. They already know there's a superintendent opening here. So people have already started that process, as I mentioned, uh, 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 I may have mentioned before. They've already reached out to us and say, hey, tell me about Pajaro. And so they already know. We will send this out to our 1,100. Uh, people to say, or have sent it out to say, hey, Paro has a superintendent opening, doesn't have any details to it. So people already know that you have an opening, and at this point, they are deciding whether or not it's a fit based on uh, conversations they're going to have not only with me and Blanca, but also other members of our uh, firm along the way. So that's, that's why it, it is ample time for them. Um, I have a question regarding that a little. Um, I know there's sometimes a, a good time, you know, a more optimal time for recruitment. Is there a time? I've already heard from, I don't believe it, I'm not, don't recall if it was you or the other mm -hmm. um, firm that was saying January is the optimum time to, for that recruitment. And we're going to do this in October. So are we cutting ourselves short by speeding up this timeline? Just want to get your opinion on that. Three years ago, I would say, yeah, January is the time. We no longer, have, and we used to have what we called a season. Our season was typically January to June. That was it. We had very few superintendent searches between. Our firm currently has over 20 right now because there's no longer a season. Uh, we. Uh, you know, if you read the newspaper, you see openings happening all of the time. And so we, we 
Yeah, it's just the landscape has changed dramatically in three years. Uh, we used to always be able to, to have all of our firm meetings and trainings and so on during the summer months, and no longer the case. Yeah. And, and because you're a big district, so you're going to get national attention because people are just going to look at size alone. Size alone, your population alone, they're going to look at that. And, and so, uh, we won't have any problem finding strong candidates and national candidates who are going to look at this as, as, a, as a possibility. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Eric. I'm going to also just jump in on that because I have heard others say it's still the time and what you're saying sounds reasonable. And, and, but I, I think it's important to note that there's also going to be good candidates who might not want to leave their district mid-year. Mm -hmm. And we might want to hire that person. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we have a beautiful contract with our interim right. that allows them <laughs> to stay. Do you hear that, Murray? Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful contract. Yeah. And so we have, so I think it's important to communicate. I think it's important that if we find the great person in November, December, that, that people know that mm -hmm. we can figure out a start time that works. Correct. To your point, I, I, I think this is important, Adam, that you mentioned it. Thank you. You just triggered something with me. And that is the reason why it was January is because that's when people announced their retirement. That's the real reason why January was the start. Now what superintendents are doing, they're starting to tell their boards now that they're retiring at the end of the year to so give their boards more time. There's a, there's a lot of other changes just because of, you know, board superintendent relationships. That's just the reality of it, Al. But that's the reason why it used to be a season, because people were announced their retirement in December, January, and then uh, we'd be off to the races. So just to clarify, I think I heard you said earlier, you're going to update the timeline based on the new community. So exactly. So that's going to, are we going to do that when, are we going to have a time, is this the end of the agenda right here? Are we going to keep talking timeline next? No. Can you bring up the timeline? It's the best. Timeline. See, he doesn't work for me. Yeah. He works for Murray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So, so this is all going to be updated? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing on this thing is accurate any longer. Okay. Uh, the only thing is accurate is today's meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Nothing else is accurate. So the updated timeline would be you'll email that to all the board? Correct. In fact, what I would love to be able to do, if we can, is to email it to you for your, your uh, September 13th meeting. Okay. So you can look, take a look at it and have conversations about it, et cetera. So it seems to me um, that for those of us who are on the agenda setting committee that we need to bring back two separate items at the separate, because I do look at these as standalone Correct. Items, and they are. You're right. And w one being that salary range for this uh, permanent superintendent mm -hmm. and the second being this timeline. You'll provide an updated timeline. Um, but I do still hold some reservation with this timeline um, uh, for the posting of the position and for a few reasons. Again, mm -hmm. I, I can bring it back to my personal and professional experience mm -hmm. of sitting on hiring committees and know that what I see is we do get a different pool in those mm -hmm. months of January and, 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 and February in academia. It is also what we have heard here at mm -hmm. this board not necessarily from your firm, the other search firm. Mm -hmm. And it's also what we've heard from our own district administration with mm -hmm. even admin positions, mm -hmm. that there's high, higher admin positions through the district. So, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, sort of of the mind thought, I agree with, with Trustee Milano Scow that we have a fabulous interim superintendent who's on a year contract mm -hmm. with us. Um, <laughs> he's got did a great you, did contract. You, did you see Murray's face when he said that? <laughs> <laughs> Poker face, Murray. Um, you know, so I just don't see, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, the rush on that and, and going into holiday season, and especially if there's a potential we're going to have a conversation of, a, you know, 
who this person is going to be, but not give them a start date till maybe the next academia year, right? And so, is that being part of the, a potential part of the conversation? Yes, for us and, as a board. And because looking at the timeline, it's highly unlikely we would finish before the holiday season. And I don't like it landing in that. I mean, once you're, we're. Right, no, no, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be after January, de after January, and that's the ideal time for a, a sitting superintendent to say, I can leave, because I'm leaving at the semester, if you will, not in October, if you will, or some of those other months. So that would be an ideal time. I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you said. An ideal. I said, more than likely, your start date for your new superintendent will not start until the beginning of January. Or even potentially the next school year. Could if yeah, that's if what that's the board, board wants decides. to go, so, absolutely. So that's why I'm not really sure well, or what the candidate may want or what this board may want. Right. Right. Because there are certain benefits as well as to the stability of having our interim who's on our contract right now for a year mm -hmm. that it creates for this community. Sure. Um, we have other things going on with unions and negotiations, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I could just see a lot of benefits to that mm -hmm. fulfilling this contract with this interim superintendent and potentially looking at a start date of you know either July towards the one. end of this either towards the end of the academia year right at the end of june mm -hmm. of 2024 or july 1 of mm -hmm. 2024 mm -hmm. right it's kind of where i'm at in my thought process on that for I, a, all those variety you know, of reasons if i might just yeah thank you for saying that i just don't want us to dissuade certain candidates if we're pushing a start date of January, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's, we got flexibility. I, my, in my mind, our board should choose the best candidate regardless of if they can start in some reasonable time, whether it's January, m March, or June. Mm -hmm. We want the best candidate. I don't want, to, I don't want us, our advertising to dissuade some because we're trying to rush it. That, I think that's, 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 that's where I'm standing on that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sheckman, can you truly work the full year with coming out of retirement and all that? Is, aren't there limitations on how much you can work? I um, signed a contract that said I would work um, through the semester and if needed till the end of the year. Okay, great. I've already agreed to give up STRS. Uh, you had me sign a contract that said no San Jose State, which was in my uh, plan anyway. So. You know, so you, so we're good hoping, in that way, yeah. My wife and I are hoping to, uh, we have a, a date planned in southern Spain in March, um, and she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. committed to what we agreed on, it, you know, making it work. I really appreciate what you're trying to do. Uh, you may find a great candidate who wants to come on board but mm -hmm. says to you, I can't come until I'm done with my contract where I am now. I'll be there June 30th. Right. That's within the realm of possibility. Correct. I think more likely, in what Eric is sharing, that you're going to have some really quality people nationwide and that a natural break is at the semester, which is why you set up my contract as such. Mm -hmm. But the flexibility is there. I'm living and breathing and appreciating the people around me and the work that you folks are doing. So, you know, find a great one. We're with a great company here. And um, he's learning, and probably Eric has already known, this is a very collaborative community. Mm -hmm. If the folks that have been identified and probably others aren't involved. You hear about it. <laughs> you'll hear about it. <laughs> no. I, it's just got to be, mm -hmm. but that's what will happen in the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. So, Eric, could could there be something like a recruitment now? The candidates are vetted, and then if for some reason we we feel like that pool isn't quite as good or as big as we'd like, we could hold and go out again in January without doing interviews. Or with doing interviews, either one. Yeah, I would suggest that if a candidate, if the candidates are going to put their names in, particularly sitting superintendents, you need to inter do an interview, and they need to know they're either in or out, because they're not going to go for dangling 
between now and the end of the year. So you're going to lose some candidates by doing that. I, I, I don't know. I don't think starting a vetting process or starting a process in this time period is, is rushing things. Um, I don't think, I think we can begin the recruitment process. I think that's appropriate. Um, we've been talking about this for so, several months now. Um, if we don't, if we're looking at the candidates that you know come before us, and they don't seem like they're a good fit, I think then absolutely, you know, being mindful of. Okay, if we don't see good fits, then we look for other options and expand you know, from there. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to get this process started at the very least. I don't. I don't want to wait for January if we don't need to. Mm -hmm. And certainly, I, I, but I would have no objection, like if a candidate, if we find you know, a great candidate and they're not able to start right away, that's, mm. I have no objection to um, that being part of the negotiation process. Mm -hmm. And I, I would second, I mean, that's not a motion, but I, is that a motion? We're not voting, mm -hmm. are this we? Is a, this discussion. is a discussion. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to start now. I think there's a lot of people out there that mm -hmm. are excellent candidates that mm -hmm. might want a shot at being a superintendent here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, just I, I'm not against uh, starting to recruit this fall. Um, what I don't want to do is push saying we, we are preferring somebody to start at a certain date necessarily. That's what I'd, makes me uncomfortable. That's the Druthers. <coughs> Do we bring you a timeline that starts um, end of September, early October? Or do we want to move it back? What? Well, we'll have we'll have it as an action item to, you know, to vote on the timeline. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have at least four people who are willing to. I, I, it's like. It doesn't sound like you're un unwilling to consider. Uh, well, I th yeah, I just, I think he's got a specific process in mind. So I, I think, Eric, you just said you're going to update update this for us and bring it so we can just, because I know it's one boom, 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 and then there's some mm -hmm. other considerations. So I'm, that sounds like a good next step to me. Um, okay. What I heard earlier was a request to delay that timeline by about two weeks. Correct. And then I want to make sure I've got it right that maybe two separate action items on September 13th. One, the timeline. Correct. Two, the salary range. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that give you the? Absolutely. Okay. Yep, it gives me direction. That's what this is about. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now I'm going to ask you the first prompt, and that is, what are the desired characteristics you want to see in your next superintendent? And you can just popcorn them out. So my thoughts with this part is that I and it's kind of coming back to some of those things I noted earlier, mm -hmm. right? I sort of have a, a real struggle with putting that out there as a sitting board member and trustee before hearing what that community's input is, right? Because mm -hmm. to me, this isn't my superintendent, right? This is this community superintendent and what my 
my views of those qualities, characteristics, right, mm -hmm. the strengths, the challenges, I, I just feel hearing the voice of the community before it's my voice as the one they put here, right, to represent them, mm -hmm. that's where my thought process is with that for me. I would say conversely, I'm completely comfortable talking about it because mm -hmm. it, it's going to take the whole village to mm -hmm. inform leadership and associates about what's important. Mm -hmm. So for me, what's important is somebody that does have teaching experience and understands deeply curriculum because at the end of the day, achievement is achievement and opportunity that we provide our children so that they can succeed in college or career. Um, is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like a deep understanding of curriculum. Secondly, um, I like to see somebody who's a, who has a big heart for and compassion for this, for the population that we have here, um, and who's an excellent communicator. I'd like to see somebody who um, is excellent at partnering with the community to bring opportunity for our children and families. Am I talking too fast? No, go ahead. Um, and I'd like to see innovation. I'd like to see somebody that's data driven and understands how to um, look at data and pivot if needed. And I'd like to see somebody who has excellent um, relationships with the teachers and staff in their school district. Mm -hmm. Okay. Others? Thoughts? Um, sure. Um, I think I second pretty much everything Trustee DeSerpa said. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have a candidate who has teaching experience and, and significant teaching experience um, and, and maybe and or counseling experience, but teaching experience is pretty important. We Obviously, that's something pretty cool that we have in our interim superintendent. Um, I like the idea of somebody who's been a principal, too. Principals, as a, especially we know at our high schools, that's a, that's a big, big job, and somebody who has done that before. Mm -hmm. Uh, and done that well, it's going to earn earn my respect, and that's that's a notch. Um, that's important for me. I think it is important that somebody's bilingual, absolutely, and has uh, great uh, people skills. Not just great ideas, but can bring people along. Um, big district, diverse, excellent board, can work with us and 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 bringing about solutions. So those are a couple of. And then also, importantly, like wants to really love this community. And uh, I know that's a tough one because you hear people, well, we, we want to attract outside talent to come here. And that's, that's often framed as a compensation package kind of thing. But do you actually got some love for a rural community? Mm -hmm. you know? um, and can you see it? And, and do you come, do you, can you appreciate a community like the Pajaro Valley? Obviously, there's places in California like, like here. And so. Um, just kind of having a demonstrated, I don't know how if, they've dem if they can, there's a way to demonstrate that commitment, but just knowing that this is a place they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, because we got some challenges and we want to have somebody who wants to commit and hopefully do a great job with us and, and really tackle, nothing's going to be solved easily overnight. So that's, who they come with, and then finally, I, I'd be remiss of not, not saying they got to be an advocate for the arts. They got to love the arts. All right, I'll leave it at that. I, I want to say Trustee Dodge, he texted me. He had a family emergency. He's sorry he can't be here. I'm sending him his well wishes, hmm. but uh, that's why he's not here. Hmm. I should also, thank you. I, I should also mention that Trustee Soto is a, a Lance, basically a, there's a fire near his house. So hmm. Okay. That's why he's not here. Trustee Flores, did you want to say anything? Um. We heard a lot of great um, desired qualities and characteristics tonight um, from 
all of our PVFT um, people who are here today. Mm -hmm. um, I know our CSEA would probably echo a lot of what they had said. Um, I know our parents want to be sure that they're heard. Um, I'm being a parent myself. I want to make sure you know our parents' um, rights are protected, and um, I want to make sure that our parent, you know, as a parent, when we're sending our children off to school, that we know that they're safe. Mm -hmm. um, but and th these are just things that I'm adding on top of sure. what I heard um, everyone else say. Of course, you know, to me, curriculum is is important. Um, our ed you know, we're, we're here to educate the children. I. Um, Definitely think, like uh, Trustee Bolanowskow said, we want someone who does have a heart for our community. Um, we are a very unique, diverse community, and um, when you're here, you can't help but love it. And um, we just really need someone who's going to embrace that and um, nourish it. Um, yeah, that's it for right now. I'll have okay. more. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Um, I know for me, um, I come from, you know, it's like I, I'm, I'm a nurse, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and I, I teach, mm -hmm. you know, nursing, and it's like one of the things I taught was, you know, ethics. Mm. So somebody with, somebody who has a strong sense of ethics and balancing, just, just has a strong work ethic and is able to balance those dilemmas that come up when you work in a public school system, you know, and, and is able to under, like deal with those kind of complexities that you mm -hmm. deal with, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, have a student-centered approach to balancing those dilemmas that come up. Um, I think it's really important, you know, I also, I, I come from a labor background. Um, as as much as you know, we we wrestle with our organization sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like I am a firm believer that the advocacies our unions do is so key and so vital in ensuring workplaces and learning environments. And I want to I want a superintendent. Who can roll with that? You know, and take the advocacy for what it is, advocacy. Mm -hmm. You know, and can mm -hmm. be okay with that, mm -hmm. you know, it might get spicy Maybe. sometimes and mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you know, I, I think you know, many of our trustees, you know, have spoken to just that there this there is something really special about this district. You know, there, there, there just is. It's like, you know, I, I chose to work in this area as a nurse. And, and it's just like, like, I want somebody who sees, you, you know, as, as frustrating as there are things about, you know, like it's like the cost of living, oh my gosh. You know, and there's all the challenges we have with environmental factors, and but it's like, but there is something about this area, and the the people who live in this area are, you know, in all of the different regions we have. There's something special here, and I, I want somebody who recognizes that. Yeah. yeah, that is so true. I can tell you just from being in Campbell, mm -hmm. everybody knows Power Valley. And I grew up in L.A., so everybody knew L.A., if you will. So I, I definitely understand that, that, that sense. Yeah. So, Eric, um, <laughs> because <laughs> I am not going to voice my um, thoughts on this. As I said, I do okay. want to um, echo what uh, Trustee Flores said and thank um, our five members of our community who showed up here tonight and did mm -hmm. speak on this. Okay. Um, what I would like to ask you is we also have two of our colleagues who, for very compelling reasons, by the sounds of it, um, could not be here this evening. So um, perhaps, like after the point you've had the community input, could you wreck, sort of round back, you and or your colleague Bianca, round back with mm -hmm. me and also 
with my our two colleagues that weren't able to be here tonight due to compelling reasons um, and get our input for that board portion okay. when you're the making the okay. trends mm -hmm. and bringing everything together mm -hmm. would you be fine with that I'm okay with that thank you the board's okay with it yeah. perfect all righty Maybe we can have that as just a, a public discussion item in the interest of transparency. Well, we have to, yeah, I agree, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. Chance, you've already done this, but now you get to brag even more so because what the strengths of the district brings about is our chance to brag about your district, the candidates who we are strongly recruiting. For, uh, for this position. So we want to be able to say, no, we know for a fact, we know that these things are happening in, in, in this district along the way. So what are the strengths of the district? I'll, I'll start with I, one that was highlighted at our last meeting is our um, innovation in our dual language program here. Very proud of that. Proud of, I'm just happy to see our language ambassadors you know, at all levels. Um, I got to visit uh, Starlight last year and, and see the kinder, third, and fifth graders, and I unfortunately had to miss our um, ceremony where we were giving certificates to the, once they reached that highest level. So, But I'm very excited about our dual language program, and that's one of our, our definitely our strengths of our district. Brag, you guys, come on. I know we don't do this often. Go ahead. I'll go. Um, we have a really strong um, staff in the district office right now. Um, super, super committed administrators that are moving our um, achievement forward. Our staff and teachers um, are, to me, more like family. I feel like we're one big family. We try to recruit and retain excellence in the workforce. For the first time um, in many, many years, we're um, reintroducing music into almost every school across the district. We have a robust arts program. We have excellent sporting programs at the high schools. We've done an amazing job in the last seven years of um, partnering with community groups to provide extra opportunities for our students and families. We have an excellent adult school which provides opportunities to continue um, their GED, people's GED or high school diplomas, and English as, I think, English as second, or no, sorry, to learn English, classes to learn English, and then a lot of um, adult, just regular, like kind of adult ed programs for um, a certified nursing assistant and cosmetology. And what else do we have? People help me. Oh, for the for adult ed. Oh, mm -hmm. adult. So many good ones. Oh, yeah. We also have a, a robust CTE program, career and technical education, which has brought in tons and tons of money. And we have wonderful pathways for students for career technical education. We have a lot um, happening here. We also have at every elementary school an after school program. So parents don't have to pay for child care. They, their kids can stay after school in an enriching environment and safe environment. So am I missing anything? Does anyone else want to add? Oh, just um, and a lot of like, uh, particularly like our, our dual enrollment programs right now are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, as I, since I teach at our local community college, it's like we've been having so many of our, our dual enrollment students and like we've had my, my nursing cohorts are getting younger and younger because <laughs> they're get, they, these students are completing their prerequisites while they're still in high school, mm -hmm. which it's been phenomenal. And, and they're, they're coming to our program ready. Mm. Um, and you know, I, I sit on the Pajaro Valley Education Foundation, mm -hmm. and we do an Innovator of the Year Award every annually. And it just, it impresses me because we, it's like, it is the most difficult award to decide. Mm -hmm. 
because we go through, we, we look at, it looks at our, you know, classified certificated mm -hmm. staff at various levels and it's like, I want to honor them all, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's like, and, and it's just a small fragment, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, my, I, I've, I've been a, a PBSD parent since 2003 mm -hmm. and just the dedication of our, 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 you know, teachers and staff and administrators, it's like, I see it. I see the work that they're doing. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. you know. So that that the, the the dedication of the people who work here is, it's impressive. Um, and you know, just as as somebody who, uh, my kids were in kinder before. <laughs> we went to the 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 full day kinder and 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 before we had like the the after school or the extended learning mm -hmm. opportunities. And it's like. I'm a wee bit jealous because those programs are so robust now and it's like that is so helpful to so many of our families it would have been so great but hey that's that's why we do what we do right to make things better for the people who mm -hmm. come after us right I think that's that says most of it um, I think, yeah, we have amazing dedication from our community and our staff, our teachers, that people really want to see th our, our kids succeed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have different definitions of that, but I think people really uh, care and uh, at all levels, at all levels from the district, from classified workers, some of whom make too little money, as we know, teachers who are making slightly better money now, administrators, Everybody really cares about this uh, district, and so uh, that kind of passion uh, is maybe you know that's something that that's why I said earlier this person's got to want to really love to be here because they're gonna have to they're gonna be enveloped in that passion, and I, I think it's mostly a strength. Um, obviously, amazing diversity of people, of incomes, of, of um, and we have. Uh, one of the best climates in the face of the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just, just that's just that just goes without saying. This is, and so uh, yeah, excellent board of trustees too. <laughs> I will say one last thing, and that's our achievement has um, really improved in the last seven years. We had been at the very bottom mm -hmm. of almost the very bottom of California schools, and now we're um, about 50 percentile. So I feel really okay. happy and proud of that, and I'd like yeah. to keep that momentum moving in the right direction. All right. What are the challenges someone's going to face coming in here? got a there's a it's a district that's got very different demographics in very different areas mm -hmm. you know that's got very different interests and sometimes those interests come in conflict um, mm -hmm. well we have a, a Exceptionally high cost of living, as I guess most of the California coast does nowadays, from pretty much the Bay Area to San Diego, probably the whole coast now. Um, and that creates, uh, and, and it's a budget challenge as well with, with wages, cost of living, um, and, it, and it impacts the entire community mm -hmm. um, in many ways. So that's, that's a challenge. Um, Oh, somebody else. Um, we have at, we have um, some schools in our district that are very old, mm -hmm. and so we have facilities needs that have gone um, unmet because of budgetary issues. We did pass a school bond about ten years ago, 
but it only took care of maybe half or less than half of, of the basic needs that needed to be met. So, um, so that's, I think, a challenge mm -hmm. in terms of keeping our facilities safe mm -hmm. for our students and faculty. Um, we also have, the, I think we are, in terms of square footage for the district, the biggest district in the whole state in terms of mm -hmm. square footage of bound our boundaries. And we have um, a lot of, a lot of um, schools here, right? So there's a lot of um, driving to get out to the school sites. But that would be an expectation is that this new superintendent would get out to all the school sites regularly. Challenges? They'd have to work with us. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, it, it's, it, it's a. I mean, we all have different viewpoints and opinions, and we come, we represent our constituents, and the reality is, we're an elected board, right? You know, it's like the makeup of the board could change, mm -hmm. you know, at, at election cycles. Um, Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a strength, sometimes that's a challenge, and it kind of depends on the perspective of whoever's there. Right. And, you know, someone's experience on dealing with elected boards. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something to think about. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think on that note, I, I would say we're a pretty active, caring, smart board that just doesn't, isn't going to just lay low and just, you know, be a rubber stamp. I don't think that's how we see ourselves, and which is a great thing for our community because that's, I think that's what we're supposed to do. So, but yeah, having somebody who's that's why I said familiar with great people spills, no collaborative, bring people along. Uh, it's going to be important because they just, you know, looking for somebody. Hey, just do your thing. Mm -hmm. See you at the next meeting. No, that's that's not how I view my, this job, and I don't I don't think y'all do either. Anything else's challenges? I'm just going to ask you again, bring it back to me when we have that community input and also our two colleagues who unfortunately couldn't be here this evening. Okay. Yes? Um, I know um, Trustee DeSerpa mentioned uh, academics um, as, as, a, as a strength, but I would also like to say, like, I know we're going to have a study session on our CAS scores soon, and I would like for our super, future superintendent to kind of focus and try to get those mm -hmm. up because I don't believe we were as strong as we had originally thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that might be a challenge that they, you know, might want to tackle. I would love to see, you know, mm -hmm. us do better. Mm -hmm. I think declining enrollment is a challenge for most districts right now, but uh, in particular ours, we're down about 5,000 students from our height. So um, there's budgetary issues that go along with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other things you want to add either in the characteristics, in the strengths, and or the challenges. Not hearing any? Well, seeing how this is going to have to be brought back <coughs> at a later date, um, mm -hmm. there will be time for the four that have spoken on this tonight to also have food for thought for that. Correct. Right? Yep. And we'll bring that back as yep. part of a item on one of our public session yep. after we've had the community input and had time to review that raw data that you're going to provide us. Okay. Did you want to review the data before you input or did you want to input before? The previous, what you said. Review the data first from the community input because that's what I'm representing, not my own self-interest. Mm -hmm. Right? So. And again, to also get input from our two colleagues who couldn't be here tonight. So I think we could move that forward when we've had that opportunity to review that and we could have it on mm -hmm. an agenda. Mm -hmm. And it'll Certainly give everybody a chance to ground that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Right, but just so Eric has that to be mm -hmm. in that timeline and time frame mm -hmm. now. Okay. 
Any other questions? Points of clarification? Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We got a lot of good information. We have a couple of things we need to do for your next board meeting, including uh, getting the salary range and getting an updated timeline. Mm -hmm. I just remembered one question. You got it. With the bilingual question, because I know that's something that we've heard a lot. Mm -hmm. And is that something that we can, and you, you had mentioned it as like the kind of category one or, mm -hmm. okay. is that something we can require? Because I know like in other like hiring committees that I've been participating for, I couldn't require that. Correct. New yeah. law basically it has basically says you can prefer, you can even strongly prefer, uh -huh. but you can't require. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, that yeah. was the case here. No. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up no because problem. that's one that oftentimes gets lost. Yeah. And, and, and boards sometimes get don't understand why we didn't put no. We want it required, and, and yeah. you cannot say it's required. It's okay. Preferred. Mm -hmm. Sorry about. No. Mm -hmm. Meant to ask that earlier, and I yeah. wrote it down, but I forgot to ask it. So. No all right yeah. wonderful well, well thank you if there's no further discussion then we will adjourn our next regular meeting is scheduled for september 13th and the meeting is adjourned at 8 59.